I'm Gary Gannon. This is my wife, Verda. Nice uh, we moved moved to Sun City West approximately a year ago, and uh, we found out that they had an agricultural club, which was part of the 110 various clubs they have here. And after listening to Declare Your Independence, we figured we would, it would be advisable to start growing our own food. So this is our experiment in gardening. This is our first year with this plot. And we haven't harvested much yet, but we're just in the process of putting everything in. We should get our first harvest probably by the end of May. Everything should be in. Well, where have you planted? Uh, Verna, you go ahead and tell it. Well, um, just a variety of things that we can, can use. It'll save me trips to the grocery store. Um, our masculine mix, not lots of lettuce, different variety of lettuce. Um, some that will withstand heat better than others. We've got many varieties of peppers in, uh, some bush beans and the, the climbing vine beans, beets. Um, as you go back into the garden, we laid out some area for squash, zucchini, and uh, yellow neck. Well, how did you find out about this place? What is this place? Uh, this is uh, the Agricultural Club, which is one of the 110 various uh, types of recreational clubs that they have offered here at Sun City West. And uh, looked it up on the internet. You can find find a listing of all the clubs on the internet, anywhere from uh, Verdes and the Bead Club and the uh, Scrapbooking Club and I've got an arthritis club that we've got a full recreational facilities, gym, pool. Uh, there's seven golf courses within the complex here. So there's a lot of things to keep people busy. And a lot of the retirees out here came from the Midwest and they were gardeners, so they wanted an agricultural club. So they had this leftover land and I think it started in the early 80s. Uh, I know Paul, I think, has been here since 83. And uh, just people growing their own, and then when they get tired of it, they turn it over to somebody else. And uh, depending on the improvements they've made, you pay whatever, pay for whatever improvements they make. But as far as the club's concerned, uh, the fee is five dollars a year per person. What kind of production comes out of here? You know, I, I hear tell you know they're saying they're giving hundreds, if not thousands, of pounds to charity and such. Is that Continuous? Do they have year-round crops, or in the summer do they take a break? Take that one. Um. Yeah, basically it's two crops a year. The summertime it's a little too hot. They just try to maintain the perennials during the summer with shade cloth over it and a lot of watering. But uh, the planting is generally in February uh, for the spring crop, and then the end of September, early October, they'll start the fall crop. Uh, what you see as you go through here now is most of it is the larger plants are all the fall crop that they're harvesting, they're in the process of harvesting. But uh, you've basically got two, two growing seasons here. So now that you've got it kind of set, it looks like you're, you know, it's not a whole lot of work to do. How much time do you spend here a week? Well, we put a clock up because when we come over, we get lost in time. Um, it's pretty easy now. It's it's totally maintenance for us right now, and so I can usually get in and out of here in half, half hour, hour, 45 minutes at the most. Um, we're trying to get Donna's uh, crop in, get hers all all settled, so that she can also uh, sit back and watch it grow. It's um, it, it's different. Um, I've grown container and uh, in, in the ground back in California. And I'm finding it's very, very different here. It's um, a little bit uh, harder for me to decide how much water to give the plants um, and uh, which and where and when you can plant them. Uh, in California, you stick them in the spring and you harvest in the fall and you're okay. Here, it's, it's a little different, and this year is all experimental for us. We've planted a, a few of some plants, not nearly enough to sustain us. Uh, we'll probably be able to can uh, tomatoes between Donna's uh, and your garden of tomatoes that we're planting and ours. 
Um, hopefully, John and I will be able to get some uh, tomatoes canned. Um, if we're lucky, we'll get some beans canned. Um, it's a little late, but I did put in some peas. Uh, they tell me it. In California, I could have planted them now, and by summer uh, it would be fine. But here, I may have gotten them in just a little late. But we'll see. We may have them in our salads. I, I asked uh, the former president um, about a lot of different things, and he intimated to me that uh, they may allow chickens to come in here. Mm -hmm. Ooh. But that's been a request, <laughs> and they're taking about it. So if they were to allow uh, chicken coops to be in here, would that be something you'd be interested in? Oh, absolutely. We'd love to have some chickens. Start lobbying, man. <laughs> well, that's the first time I'd heard about that because uh, they they told us when we joined there was no livestock. Uh, but I think it would be ideal for chickens. Uh, most uh, communities have a restriction on uh, roosters and that, but the the, ch the hens don't make any noise and that. They help keep the bugs out and everything. I wouldn't have any problem putting a chicken coop in here. Then you'd have. Um Manure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You could put them in here. Yeah. And then just let them out for a little bit. Go get them bugs. Yeah. That's right. Get the bugs. Keep, keep them well fed and out. I don't think they would attack the plants that much if they did. Uh, as a Sun City West owner, if they come available, we can have up to four of these 16 by 32 foot plots between Virgo and I, two each. So we've only got one right now, so we could get three more. Say I got the one next door, I could just have that for chickens if we're allowed chickens. When did, how long ago did you start this? We started this in, uh, what, February? Uh, yes. Yeah, February. So we're just now getting our first crop in, but we should, uh, should be harvesting by May. Have you seen some of the harvesting of the other plots that have been more mature and how much food they're producing? Oh, absolutely. Paul down here, just about every time we come in, gives us big bags of uh, produce, carrots, and uh, there's a bok choy we got. We got some... Kohlrabi. Kohlrabi We've was another one. We've been introduced to kohlrabi. Yeah, kohlrabi. Uh, Swiss chard. A lot of people here grow Swiss chard. There's been five different vegetables that we had never eaten before that we've gotten to try just from uh, talking to some of the uh, our neighbors here, some of the people planting, and they're like, here, try some. They chop off a big, big hunk of a plant. Everyone's very, um, very generous, helpful, helpful, very generous. Um, we've picked a lot of very intelligent brains. They, we've got farmers here that have done this for a living, yeah. so we can almost find, always find, somebody that can answer a question for us: how to cook it. How to grow it. You know, that's something of interest. Um, since you're out here, you know, if you were to talk to people about them being making themselves available for interviews or getting some information or teaching, and we can archive a lot of this information, okay. you know, because this is, you know, a lot of the people that we talk to around the country, you know, Arizona climate, like you're, you just moved you know, five hour drive away, yeah. and it's a totally different planet here. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And there, I, I, there's tri tricks we can, uh, we're learning right now to grow in extreme conditions, and this is a desert condition, it, it, is, it is extreme. Uh, in our shed back there, we've got the shade cloth that'll go up uh, over this as it gets a little hotter. We've got the pins already made, where you, you just hook it up with the ties. It's all pre-cut and everything to put out. So that, that was another part of the uh, the plot that we bought. She had all the shade cloth for us. Well, what are you hoping to accomplish? You did this, you know, to entertain yourself, to feed yourself, to educate yourself. What was the Basi motivation? Uh, basically all three. I worked for 36 years in the wholesale food distribution industry. I worked for uh, the largest uh, retailer owned co-op uh, on the west coast and uh, I know the fragility of the distribution system and we just had an example with the tsunami and the earthquake over in Japan and if that ever hit California where over half of the food supply comes from the Central Valley all the vegetables and that uh, the food could be in very short supply very quickly 
and uh, with earth earthquakes I was on various committees and that figuring out how we were going to continue uh, distributing to our members in the event of an earthquake at Los Angeles and basically what we came up with it would have to be out of our uh, Stockton warehouse that uh, where our facility was located at Eastern Avenue there were too many overpasses and underpasses to be able to reliably get food out and the other major problem was getting food into Los Angeles. Uh, water's another problem in Los Angeles where all the water comes over the San Andreas Fault, whether it comes from Northern California, whether it comes from the Sierra Nevadas, or whether it comes from the Colorado River. All three of the major aqueducts come over the San Andreas Fault. And when the 57 quake hit the San Fernando quake, they were just building the California aqueduct. It wasn't filled yet, but it delayed the opening of it by six months. You can imagine what would happen if there's a major quake on that fault line. So I think it's incumbent upon everybody to have a food supply, not only canned foods and that, but uh, the availability of, availability of fresh food. So that's one of the reasons we started this, is there's a lot of things we don't know about growing food, and we wanted to experiment and try different things. Uh, we're also growing some in containers at our house. Uh, I'm looking into the possibility of setting up hydroponic on our patio where you can grow uh, both plants hydroponically and there's a system available where they can put fish underneath the, uh, the raised beds of the hydroponic and just circulate the water from the fish through and fertilize the plants while they're growing. But that's going to be another project. Right now we're on this. <laughs> well, not to Always mention, thinking ahead. Now, not to mention just how how different it tastes when you've yeah. grown it. Um, we, we're trying to do it as free of pesticides as we can. Organically. Um, an organic garden um, to a point. Um, and it's just nice. I did not realize, uh, last year I had no garden at all, and I didn't realize how many times I would come, leave the kitchen, walk outside, you know, pick the green beans, for dinner. Lettuce. Lettuce was a big thing. I didn't buy lettuce all summer. Um, just to be able to pick it and have that source right, you know, handy. Um, that's kind of the reason I got yeah, started in it. Fresh food. You, you pick it, rinse it, goes right on the table. The lettuce, the tomatoes, the bell peppers, uh, Green beans we had, wax beans, uh, zucchini, you go get a fresh zucchini out of the garden, you take it off, take it in and wash it, put that in the salad or do it a stir fry, Verda likes to stir fry that stuff, and there's nothing better than fresh vegetables directly out of the garden. You can't buy it, there's a minimum of a 24 to 48 hour delay on anything you buy in a store, and anything that's out is going to start to deteriorate and that, whereas this, we pick it and we eat it within half hour of picking it. So the, it always tastes so much better. There are also people here that um, will work a lot uh, for someone. Um, some of the older people have had their lots for a while. They can't, they can't get out and they can't do it, and there's several people in here that are more than happy to kind of cooperate with them. They'll use the land, you know, the lot, and then they will get a certain percentage. Yeah, sharecropping. Uh, sharecropping, really, if you want to call it sharecropping. Oh, that's what the club but, calls it. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, and it, and it yeah. is. So it makes it handy. You know, people will, will help each other. It's, it's just kind of a community of very nice people. So you think you're going to be continually doing this for foreseeable future? Well, as long as we can, as long as the economy holds up and it doesn't get too much worse. Security might be a problem if it gets really bad here, but uh, uh, other than that, we'll keep gardening as long as we can.